Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Hello, Montague County, and welcome to this week's edition of Tomahawk TV News. I am Morgan Dyer with your news. We have some more exciting stories for you this week. First off, we have Christine DeBoard, Alex Sampson, and Anthony Rodriguez with your music review of the week. What's up guys and welcome to our first episode of Tomahawk's Moment for Music. And today we are going to talk about three bands from various, various time periods, starting out as a throwback band, The Beatles. The band was first called Quarry Men. All members had been classmates at Quarry Bank Grammar School in Liverpool, England. They played a genre of skiffle, a mix of jazz, and folks in the blues. Next up, we have modern rock Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters were founded on November 23, 1995 and formed the modern rock hits This Is Call, I'll Stick Around, and Dig Me. The Foo Fighters emerged from the ashes of Nirvana, but the band's true roots lay in their years of personal recording made by Dave Grohl. The former drummer of Nirvana and now lead singer of Foo Fighters. And last but not least, we have the popular band Green Day. Green Day was part of the California punk scene, childhood friend Billy Joe Armstrong, guitarist and vocalist, and Mike Pritchard, the bassist, formed their band Sweet Children in Rodeo, California when they were 14 years old. By 1989, the group had added drummer Al Sorrento and changed their band name to Green Day. Thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next week on Tom Hawk's Moment for Music. Thanks guys. Now let's move on to Alex Perez with your video game review. Hello Nakona High School and welcome to Game Reviews with NHS Gamer. Today we cover a game that answers the question on everyone's mind. How well will I survive in an American post-nuclear wasteland? I will be talking about Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is rated M for Mature, so be sure to ask a parent permission before buying. Fallout 4 is for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Also, the game has not been released yet, so all footage is from the E3 2015 presentation. All information is based off the conference held by Tom Howard, the game director and executive producer. Fallout 4 is set in post-apocalyptic Boston, and by first look, the fact is certainly evident. The game's large, unpopulated landscape, as well as the age destroyed landmarks, show the scale of the impact of the war that threw the world into chaos and despair. However, this does not stop the inhabitants of the wasteland to adapt and overcome, as you will see yourself facing monstrous supermutants, zombie-like feral ghouls, and the ever-fearsome Deathclaw. That's not to mention the denizens of the waste, ranging from your everyday bandit to your not-so-everyday, armor-clad, super-suit, well-trained Brotherhood of Steel Paladin. To be honest, I'd rather fight a Paladin than a Deathclaw. Another important thing to talk about is the beautiful graphics of the game. Graphics like this have not been seen in Fallout game before. Even by next-gen standards, the game is amazing, and for good reason. The game has been in development since the release of Skyrim in 2008. This time was well spent on the game's well-crafted physics, landscape, and graphics. I believe Fallout 4 is going to be a game that will ultimately be successful and fun, with enough content to make sure you come back often just to keep the adventure going, and with near endless possibilities, it most likely will. With enough fun to keep casual players hooked, and keep more hardcore players going for quite some time. And this is only the surface of this large and amazing game. And the only way to have the true Wasteland experience is to buy this game yourself this November 10th. This has been Alex Perez, your NHS Gamer, with your latest video game review, signing off. That looks really cool, Alex. Thank you for sharing. Now it's time to see Kieran's review of Straight Outta Compton. <laughs> Welcome to the Movie Dumpster, the segment in Tomahawk TV News where I, Kieran Gibbs, tell you what's worth seeing and what's not. This week I will be examining F. Gary Gray's narrative about the world's most dangerous rap group, the N.W.A. I will not be giving away any spoilers about the film because trust me, you want to see it. 
A friendly reminder that this film is rated R and is not recommended for any person under the age of 17 without parental consent. I will start with this. It was great. The direction was superb, it was well acted, and most importantly, the writing was spectacular. The driving force behind the authenticity of the film is its main producers, former members Osei Jackson Sr. and Andre Young, otherwise known as Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. The movie is much more than a music biopic. It provides so gritty social commentary about the world's tolerance for expression in the mid-80s through the early 90s. I would highly recommend this film to any audience member, including people who grew up with the group, as well as the younger generation who doesn't know their story. I give this film 9 tomahawks out of 10. Thank you for watching. Well, that seems like an interesting movie. Thanks, Kieran. Now, here is Macy Melton, our weather girl in training, with this week's weather. Hello everybody and welcome to Tomahawk Weather. This is Macy with your weekly report. It is going to be a cooler week for this time of year with temperatures mostly in the 80s with some lower 90s scattered throughout the week. There is a chance of rain on Friday as well as Wednesday and Thursday. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Good job Macy. Thank you for the report. We were wondering how the freshmen were liking it here at NHS so Sabrina Matthews went out to interview a few of them. Hi, this is Sabrina and I'm here interviewing Valerie Perez about her freshman experience so far. Valerie, how was your first week of high school? Uh, it was pretty great. It's not really like I expected it to be. Okay, and how did you expect high school to be? I kind of expect it to be kind of strict and stuff like that and a lot harder than middle school, but it's kind of it is harder than middle school. That was kind of expected, but it's way more laid back and kind of chill. Hey, and what class is your favorite? English, because I just really like writing. Okay. Well, thank you, Valerie, for letting me interview you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm here with Sergio Diaz. Sergio, how was your first week of high school? Pretty good. Was high school what you expected it to be? Not really. Which teacher is your favorite? Miss Snap. And what's your favorite class? Geography. Thank you for letting me interview you. <laughs> this is Dakota Moselle, a new freshman here at Nakona High School. Dakota, how has your first week been here at Nakona? It was pretty good. Um, is high school how you expected it to be? Not really. Uh, who is your favorite teacher? My favorite teacher, I think it would be Rebecca Wilson. And which is your favorite class? Uh, I think my favorite class would be movie production. Okay. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. You're welcome. This has been Sabrina Matthews coming at you from Nakona High School. I'm glad they're finding their place here at NHS. Thank you, Sabrina. Here's a look at some news happening around the country. For years, many Americans have been supporting the thin blue line emblem. This emblem is in support of police officers and officials across the country. Recently, this movement has spread and called more attention to the thin blue line. Various campaigns have been started in support of police officers everywhere. The hashtag Pray for Police has been trending on social media websites to bring more attention to the matter. Bumper stickers of an American flag with a thin blue line stripe have been sold in honor of police officers. Those were only a few examples. Many other products and campaigns have been made in support of the Thin Blue Line movement. That was a look at some news happening around you. Here's a look at some local and national sports news with Cole Jackson. Hello, Nocona High School. I'm Cole Jackson, and welcome to this week's edition of Tomahawk Sports. And local sports news this week. Last Friday, coming off their opening win, the football team played the Munster Hornets at home. Sadly, though, they did not win. This week, the Indians will play Ponder in Ponder. Last week, Nocona also hosted the Buckle Up for Lane Tournament. The Lady Indians varsity team played well enough to make it to the gold bracket, but lost before the championship game. Volleyball played Kalisburg here Tuesday and lost. 
They will play rival Holiday and Holiday on Friday. Then finally, the cross-country teams will compete in Decatur this Saturday, September 12th. In national sports news, this week after much anticipation, the NFL football season begins. Everyone, including myself, have really been looking forward to this season, especially if you're a fantasy football player like me. Last week, however, the judge in the Deflategate case nullified Tom Brady's four-game suspension, making him eligible to play in the opening game of the season. The commissioner, Roger Goodell, after his legal loss, stated that he may appeal the ruling, but he was open to changing his role in player discipline. But he most importantly just wanted to get back to football. This past Friday, when our Indians were playing, so were many other high schools, including John Jay High School in San Antonio, Texas. However, something unthinkable happened in their game. Sadly, two players from John Jay decided to hit a ref from behind for whatever reason. The two players were immediately ejected from the game and have been suspended for the rest of the season. The two also could face criminal charges, and the referee, Robert Watts, has said he wants to press charges. In much lighter news, the college football season started this past weekend. Last week, I earned issue to my top four. I will continue to do this weekly, so here's my top four after the first game of the year. Coming at number four with an impressive showing against SMU is the Baylor Bears. Going down one spot this week to number three is the TCU Horn Frogs after their unimpressive showing against Minnesota. And number two is the Alabama Crimson Tide coming off a big win against Wisconsin. And still the unanimous number one is the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's the first four for this week. But with college football, everything can change fast. But that's it for this week in sports. Once again, I'm Cole Jackson signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Thank you, Cole. Triton and Austin are here to tell you about Yeti coolers in this week's Country Kid Consumer Reports. We mud dogging, you stuck watching, wishing you could be with us cause the party popping. You say you can dig, man, we ain't seen nothing. Your girl wanna be with us, now I heard she said she want a mud digger. Hey, welcome to another episode of Country Kid Consumer Report with Triton and Austin. Today we'll be talking about the Yeti coolers. Yeti coolers were made by two brothers that always had a passion for the outdoors, hunting and fishing. But the coolers that were out there were just weren't up to their outdoor standards. The handles would break, the latches would snap off, and the lids would cave in. And that frustration led them to a solution. In 2006, the brothers founded Yeti coolers with a simple mission, build the cooler for anything. I personally think that Yeti coolers are the best. They seal off all the way around the edge and are tough and basically unbreakable. I have the smallest, it's a 20 quart. They range from a 20 quart all the way to a 420. And my 20 quart holds approximately 20 cans and the 420 holds approximately 300. Yeti also makes different sizes and cups and other devices for getting drinks cold. This 20 quart Yeti runs about 275 bucks. Trayton got it used for 200 Used Yetis are all over eBay and Amazon. If you would, would be wanting to get one slightly used for cheaper than a brand new one, there are also a few other coolers that are cheaper, but not near as tough as and rugged as the Yeti brand. Yeti coolers range from anywhere from 275 to 1700 They only come in four colors, light blue, brown, white, and turquoise. But Yeti also makes several access accessories like fishing pole holders, cup holders, seat cushions, and several other things that you can find on the Yeti website. So, if you have the money and you enjoy drinking cold beverages, then we highly recommend you buy a Yeti cooler. And that's the end of another segment of Country Kids Cinema Report. See you again next week. Dig, Dig not. That seems like a great product. Last, but certainly not least, here is Jocelyn and Connor back with a segment called The Weekly Viral. Hi, I'm Connor Barrett. And I'm Jocelyn Wadsla. Welcome to the weekly viral review in which we tell you what has been recently trending on the internet. On Instagram, at FlyawayAFG, recently posted a video showing just how students truly feel about getting ready for school. <laughs> now for our Tumblr-friendly users, 
At Daily Memes had some interesting photos that went spiraling through the site. From Batcat and the generation of our soldiers, all the way to the casual everyday Voldemort and Barbie. Recently on Twitter, World Star Hip Hop posted a tweet informing us of those who don't keep up with the news that the one and only Tom Brady beat the NFL in the Deflategate court case where the judge nullified the league's four-game suspension. Now let's not forget about our cute animal videos taking over not only Vine, but also YouTube. No Chill Jack and Essa Funktastic both recently posted videos that are on the rise. What, what? What, what? And recently, Munchkin the Teddy Bear posted yet another adorable video on YouTube, sweeping the nation's heart with Munchkin the Teddy Bear goes to the beach. Thanks for joining us on our first week of Weekly Viral Review. Be sure to stay tuned and see what's happening next week. And remember, Nokona High School. You're kind of a big deal. Great job, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you back here next week. Tomahawk TV News. Montague County's only newscast coming at you from Nocona High School.